First, I have a small request. Try to imagine a red apple in your mind. Close your eyes, take your time, apple away. Was the fruit bright, crimson, and full of reflections? Or a bit simpler? Maybe it was only in the shades of grey, or just a faded, fruity outline? Or maybe, just like the author of this exercise, you couldn't see anything at all? This condition of being unable to visualize things is called aphantasia, and this simple apple scale shows how diverse and different our internal experience can be. But what if a mushroom trip could unlock that inner vision in internally blind folks for the first time ever? That's what happened to somehow thematically named Anastasia, or to her friends, patient A. Let's dive into her incredible story. Aphantasia, thought it sounds like a name of a villain, can actually have multiple origin stories. There were cases when imagination blindness was triggered by brain injury, surgery or even COVID-19. As for our patient A, the inability to imagine things was there from as long as she can remember. Her mother died when Anastasia was one month old and her childhood, while safe, was a challenging experience. As early as kindergarten, when observing the world, she had an impression of watching puppets in theatrical plays and couldn't do things like everyone else. She felt lonely, misunderstood, unable to comprehend people. She cried every day because she suffered from feeling like an alien, despite leading a fulfilling life. Anastasia went through her life with a quite useful typographical visual mind. This means that while no visual content is shown within the inner imagination, the words themselves seem to be projected. And boy oh boy, projected they were. As she recalls, In first grade, I always got a perfect score in dictation. So one day my teacher asked me, What's your secret to being the best? And I replied, It's easy. I have the words written in front of my eyes. The teacher thought I was cheating, even though I was just trying to explain my experience. After that, she banned all materials on the desks during dictation for everyone. But I still got a perfect score. Good for her. Those subtitles, as she calls them, begin to disappear after middle school, when she learned about the death of her mother. But either way, projected words can't help you in every case. From her early childhood, she had to use different ways and techniques to arrange things and herself spatially from planning new furniture arrangements to finding herself in unknown spaces. She frequently got lost, couldn't remember roads, something she had always been criticized for and was often called stupid. That's just sad. But after reaching adulthood, some new puzzle pieces to understand her life become available. Complex and hard to understand feelings when interacting with people were somehow validated by an autism diagnosis in 2018, when she was 29 years old. Then, when she was 32, during a very revealing conversation with a loved one, she learned about this weird and unique aphantasia condition and how typographical visual mind works. It was a truly eye-opening discussion. She states that she no longer feels guilty for not being able to visually visualize things in space and no longer feels stupid. It is easy to assume that what we experience is the only way to experience things and we feel bad if we somehow don't fit, feel awkward, not understood, different. But we are all just big bang overthinking things. We are all different and quirky. And patient A had a unique experience of exploring how different this inner experience of ours can be when the murky fog of aphantasia was blown away by magic mushrooms. I guess when you have your inner eye closed, psilocybin will just grow seven more eyeballs to look at all the cool fractals. But let's get back to our patient. Before we dive in, it is important to note that substances like magic mushrooms can be very dangerous and are illegal in many places. The experiences shared here are not an endorsement or recommendations. If you are considering any form of use, please consult your healthcare professional and be aware of the laws in your area. Okay, having that out of the way, Anastasia already tried some psychoactive and hallucinogenic substances when she was 19. A couple of experiments with Salvia divinorum only caused external visual effects. 
but it all changed when she took psilocybin mushrooms. External effects were now internal and an impossible to imagine, pun intended, no regress resolution. I found it incredible because it was the first time I had images in my mind. And I realized that you can play with images, zoom in, zoom out, break down colors. The possibilities with mental images are endless and not limited to the visual and sensory experiences of real life. It goes beyond that. It's an experience of pure mind. A whole new modality, a sandbox to play with, previously not existing, was now suddenly and wildly available. It opened up incredible possibilities for me, and I can't believe that it's not the everyday experience for people, and they do nothing about it. While I find it extraordinary, being able to intensely live this experience for a day makes you want to revolutionize the world. It for sure can revolutionize how you see yourself, your experience of the world, and how you see others. In the words of our friend, you realize that your life experience is very limited compared to the reality of others. So, I think we miss out on a lot of things. Anastasia was able to experience quite a range of the imagination change. There is a vividness of visual imaginary questionnaire. It asks you to, for example, imagine a relative or, or a friend and then follow up with a bunch of questions about the clarity of that vision. Before the psilocybin mushrooms, her self-reported score was the lowest 16 points, so no mental imagery at all. After the intake, she boosted that internal vision all the way to 80. Maximum score, hyperphantasia. And in the evening, another surprise. She dreamt in images for the very first time in her life. Later on, another upgrade. The subtitles are now back, and now it seems she can choose to activate and deactivate uh, those words projections at will. This psilocybin thing is opening all previously closed doors, but it only works for a while, so it was fun while it lasted, right? Well, while the psilocybin effect started to dissipate, the imagination also started to become less vivid. The inner eye, however, after that eventful revelation, never fully closed. While no longer on the visual fractal and forced overdrive, our patient kept the newly acquired imagination. It was less intense, but still quite a change from being internally completely blind. Her brain, previously hardwired into aphantasia, got molded into something else, and she kept some of these newly formed connections. She even tried another dose of mushrooms 14 days later and 11 days after that, but she did not experience anything new. Microdosing on multiple occasions yield the same underwhelming result. But our brains are changing constantly, and her hyperphantasia mode was triggered by an external magic trigger. How does her brain get accustomed to this new setup? Did the old, non-visual neural pathways start to elbow their way back into the existence? Let's resume our journey 12 months after the initial intake. The good thing is that her imagination was still strong. Around 59 on the VV. IQ scale, with 57 um, points being the mean score for a control group without aphantasia. It does, however, work only with shades of grey now, so no vivid colors. On the other hand, she can now imagine things with her eyes opened, which is an iceberg. Dreaming in images is still a thing, but the dreams are not that frequent and some of her dreams are back to sensory impressions, other than visual in content. But Two of her remarks really stayed with me after reading the case study. First, that after the intake she gained the visual aspect of her memories. Before this experience, I had no visual memories of my life, and after the first intake, I was able to have them. For example, one of my best memories, when I was running after the chickens at my grandmother's house when I was two years old, now materializes in visual form as well. I like how clearly it shows the interaction between mental imagery, imagination, and our memory. The second remark is about how this experience was deeply emphatic in nature. Now I know that not everyone has the same life experience, so I am capable of understanding why others don't understand me and why I don't understand them. I found this case amazing not only because of the unique nature of the patient, but also because Anastasia was so introspective, eager to share her positive message about the diversity of experiences. Maybe it can help us to better understand others and ourselves. 
Anastasia would like to continue her experimentation with psilocybin mushrooms and hopes the usage can be legalized in France, where she lives. She also hopes that the topic will be explored by more researchers so that, quoting the author of the case study, she can enrich her daily experience in a supervised manner. But when it comes to understanding the science part of this whole case, well, that's a good question. Psilocybin is really making a number on our brains. It's like taking a working engine, throwing a wrench in the gears, then a couple of liters of olive oil followed by some spare gears and switching the normal fuel to a rocket one. Changes in synaptic connectivity, morphology and most importantly plasticity can have diverse consequences. The Today article is mentioning a couple of options. With the changes in density, psilocybin can impact the formation and retrieval of mental images and can enhance and wildly alter visual imagery and perceptions since serotonergic hallucinogens like psilocybin modulate networks involved in processing of visual information. Not only that, but increased communication through the brain can also be linked to things like synesthesia, so experiencing the world cross-sensory. All that while the good old default mode network um, that we activate when we immerse ourselves in thinking, imagining, or performing a task is trying to make sense of all of those weirdly new signals. Psilocybin can modulate this network as well and rewrite it to associate and digest more visual signals or other signals as well. YOLO, paraphrasing the meme, Mushroom is the captain now, at least for a couple of very interesting hours. But going back to our patient, I truly understand her push for more research done on this topic. We have only our own experience to live with. It would be amazing to have a well-studied and safe way to enrich it. Because how often can we get a brand new level of perception? How often can we see the world in a completely new way? If you like case studies like this one or are interested in psychology, feel free to like this video and subscribe. Let's explore the mind's hidden depths together. See you in the next video.